pot. I can go down a little bit low with my hands, so I'm kind of going through everything. Just doing like a lunge position. Yeah, yeah, so it's good. For a massive lunge, and obviously if you stretch forward, one, you should get a decent stretch on the front of your, your hips. Um, but two, a bit of a stretch on the front of your shoulders as well. Yeah. You need to be a bit careful with my knees still. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what was the injury? What caused that? It's just um, like cartilage irritation, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, from push pressing. Yeah. <laughs> from a heavy set of push pressing. They're just. Do you find your, your, your quads, your knees get really tight from the walking fence? Yeah, I can do. Just kind of like right in there. You had a scan on it? No, I haven't had a scan on it. Okay. I've had scans on my knees before. Yeah. Um, I didn't get a scan this time. It's, you know, I can go through like a full range kind of squat. It's just a little bit tight when I do kind of okay. around there. So we'll turn around our the legs. Just go through a squat pull. There's a little bit of weight in the arms. Push the knees forward and then come all the way back up. Mobilize the knees, the back of your body, hips, knees, like that. And the way side to side, you just pull a little bit of weight in the straps and stuff. Yeah, good. Really motion through the ductus. It's such a rock heel as well. It gets a little bit more in the hamstring there, rather than just through the ductus. sensibly pulled out because even just the warm-ups on the bike, got the open weight on the log and it was, in terms of the lift it was fairly easy but every rep was aggravating me and making it worse. So I deadlifted yesterday, first session back, um, I went through, so I deadlifted off a deficit just to go through a good range of motion but I did reverse band lift to make it very light yeah. off the floor but it's, it was fine yesterday but I, I certainly wouldn't want to push press yet. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do anything like a yoga or anything where yeah, there's yeah. going to be a lot of impact. I could probably do some light squats just to get blood in, but I wouldn't want to go heavy. So we should face the, the mirror at once, and we're literally going to throw a swipe. And so the nice thing about a swipe is it's a full range of movement for your elbow and your shoulder. So I go right to the skinny stance, because especially when we get to the heavier clubs, yeah. you take a wide stance like a kettlebell, you end up tightening yourself on the shin. <laughs> so it's a relatively skinny stance. And the nice thing about the swipes, we've got kind of three different versions of it. So you've got a nice straight line here. And then what we can do is go frontal plane. So swing it towards the kind of skirting on that side. And then we end up catching it, facing the, the air panel on the other side. So now we've got that kind of side to side motion. I'm a big fan of this because it starts to pull apart all the intercostal muscles and open up the lats. And obviously you get to link in that hip motion as well. Yeah. So it's just a lot oh, of really nice circulation because obviously it's a very peripherally loaded exercise. You start to pull a lot of blood and oxygen into the shoulder and get rid of a lot of shit and like I say, scar tissue kind of thing. So nice way of getting rid of some of the clicks. Drop it right down the back and then all the way through. I think it's shoot high and this is just shoot low. Almost tapping the club on the floor. And then up. And then we've got the full twist. So this one is where rather than swinging it by my right hand side when it's in my right hand, I swing it past my left hand side. So it's a proper pivot and then back up to an even bigger turn. But you're really sticking your ass back, trying to load almost the glute to ping back up before we rise it back up to that nice high shoulder position. And it doesn't really matter how wide your elbow goes, but it's really easy about trying to get the elbow high. So when it's at the top here, you can see the club, oh, yeah. the club can't possibly hit my back, is what we're yeah. thinking. Was, yeah, when you get lazy with the clubs, elbow comes down, you end up just hitting yourself in the shoulder kind of thing. Let's go to the other side. And then the three kind of main swipes I use, so really simple exercise. But yeah, for that pure fact that you are going through that full range of movement of the elbow and the shoulder, you will end up, yeah, really kind of freeing up a lot of these muscles. And you got that kind of like almost plyometric 
elastic kind of yeah. you know, stretch of the muscle and then bam, straight back out. So when we get to the heavier clubs, if you stop it, you let it rest here, yeah. it feels 10 times heavier. Yeah. So you start to kind of really use that elastic kind of component of the muscle. Well, I shouldn't be doing too much kind of a squat, really, should I just do Not it? a squat, it's much more of a deadlift. It's more yeah. hips back and forward. So let's go into the front of one. So all of these movements, I'm trying to use my pivot to, yeah, basically use my hips to swing the clubs back up. That's it. So when you swing over towards me, aim low, and then rip it back up from there. Point it to the floor. Face the TV on that side of the floor, on the back. All right, and then we'll go through the full rotation. So you're going to swing it past your right leg, and then back up. So swipes are nice. We're gonna go through uh, the wrist circles and the reverse circles now. So we played around with these the other day. This is all about kind of activation of your, uh, your rotator cuff. So elbow is fixed at 90 degrees. So yep. my, my kind of upper arm is parallel to the floor. My forearm is pointing vertical. And then literally we're gonna go up past the ear and just try and create the biggest circle possible. And so we're gonna do this until you can make like, just a really beautiful kind of you know, circular round shape with the club. And you feel how hard it is to kind of turn it over towards me. Yeah. So you want to try and really stick it right around there. Keep the elbow back, keep the forearm pointing vertical. It's good, man. Let's change direction now. Nice, really tight grip on the club. Massive, big circles go through the full clock face. See how your, um, your arm kind of struggles to kind of almost turn out this way? Yeah. So that's the next one. So go back to the other direction again. I always like to do three. Did you get much of a forearm kind of pump when you're doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. right, go to the side then. I can't imagine what it's like. I'm like a Goliath grip strength kind of <laughs> It's just different, isn't it? Different things you're not used to. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Down past the ear now, so in reverse direction, keeping the forearm pointing up. There's a, a Japanese kind of uh, integrative medicines kind of guy that I speak to. And he was the guy that really kind of opened my eyes to, to risk connection with the old and that kind of stuff. Really interesting guy. Um, and when I was doing a lot of strong man common competitions, that was the thing my elbow just blew up, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I just started with developing a grip kind of thing. Um, so, out to the side, push it, and then let that swing come right behind your back. And this is literally how high can we get that bad boy up your back. Nice. What I always think is, when I swing here, I'm really thinking about this nice vertical swing, because then, ideally, it's going to miss my ass and my back. Exactly. So I think kind of sword chop, and then I... You see there's a little bounce to my kind of hips. Where I'm using my hips to kind of help me get that lift nice and high and put it on the back of my this head. This is something you just need to just put my hand behind my back. This is it. Something that I find just difficult. So, particularly this one. I'm, yeah. well, I'm better on the left. Nice way of, while I'm in that stretch, 
to release some of that shit that we've got on our shoulders, basically. That's it. Any tender spots, basically. Work my way around from the sternum. I normally follow that kind of inch below my collarbone. It's normally where I feel those vibes are particularly tight. And then once you've kind of rubbed it out a little bit, let's go for five more reps. Then use that movement to kind of, yeah, dynamically pull that muscle apart just a little bit lower. and start to work a lot of those smaller muscles and retraction behind your shoulder, okay? So if we start here, so right hand, we're gonna turn 90 degrees, throw it, swing it, and then get it behind your back in that sword carry position. And that's what every rep is gonna look like. So if you don't get it behind your back, you haven't finished the rep, basically. Nice. Momentum, yeah, exactly. And, and for me, I always think of this as a, a right to left yeah. exercise. So while it's on my right, what I'm going to do is pull it, turn, and because my elbow goes up, that pull is enough to take it off my shoulder. Pull, elbow up, turn. Pull, elbow up, turn. Nice, man. And just make it nice and smooth so there's no fast or slow section, it's this constant rhythm the whole way around. That's it, three more. On the top of the yeah. Nice man, cool. Alright, same jazz with that one. Yeah, you've got to swing really nice to get. And then just use that momentum to bring it up to like 90 degrees. Pull it. And as soon as you've pulled it, I'm already turning. And because my elbow's above my shoulder, that momentum will come off. The biggest problem you have is that elbow stays below the shoulder. It's going to feel real heavy, basically. So, let's do it. So nice and high. Drops behind the back. Throw it. Always throw it past your ear as well, so we always got that 90 degree turn. And see how the heaviest part of the club comes past that ear before I throw it. That's it, three more now. Yeah, lovely. Nice one. Okay, a little 
us that we can set out that. How's it feeling? Oh. We different. Very, very different, man, yeah. And it's, it's about using that one centrifugal force for the leverage as well. And so what happens at this point is you've got this massive lever, like pulling your, your hand down, so extend your, your, your tricep your lap, whilst you're rotating. It's this massive stretch. Yeah. It has to link that kind of movement together. So yeah, really nice way of developing the mobility of the shoulder, basically. What I'm going to show you next, I think you love, um, I want to get this one down first. So let's go for 10 reps with this. I think smooth rather than like necessarily I'd say a throw, but uh, just create a nice smooth rhythm with the uh, That's it. With the throw, use that throw to come higher. You're almost going to one o'clock. Get it? Yeah. That's it. Good. Pull, turn, throw. Once you get into a like, slightly more volume based 
like clubs work. So think a lot of time kettlebells and, and clubs. Um, people always end up uh, doing functional training with them, just like you know, three sets of ten. Yeah. And when you do like six sets of big weights, it does have a proper impact on you know, your strength and uh, like to be honest, we did more than anything with forearms. Yeah. Just yeah. not used to that kind of way of training. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, I mean you've got you know your, your pinch grip, your thumb grip, but um, you know, people often find their, their fingers are much stronger than their thumb. So this really isolates your thumb, basically. Um, just a different kind of grip. Like but right, so, so let's do it. So from behind. From behind. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of big tricep press. I push it over there, load my underhand swing, and then get it back. Yes. So every time I'm just thinking, facing the mirror behind my shoulder before I whip it back up again. So again, pivot to the TV, pull it, and then face the mirror. So you're never going to look at the air column on the right, no, it's your eye looking in the mirror with the TV, so you've just got that 90 degree turn. Love it. Love it. And again, you see how I stay really in the middle of my stance. I don't need to move left or right too much. Yeah. I pivot on the spot. But very much the club moves around me rather than me moving around the body. Uh, Sweet, man. Okay, to the six. Get that club going past this this side of your body. Get it 
right past my opposite shoulder. Nice, and that's just you getting your elbow that little bit higher. Nice, man.
Try to keep the non pressing hand down where your belly button is. Nice. This you're young man, you just gotta put a bit more weight to your things. I said, when you're young vertical, you're larger. Come on. Yeah. The pump, man. Right arm feels alright, man. That's got this. Really pumped. Do you find that in, in other kind of grip training things that you do? Your left arm is the Left arm's a little bit weaker, but my grip is really strong yeah. in terms of holding things. Yeah. Um, and even like I'm quite good at leverage things, like um, tilting, like yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. But one thing I'm not good at is high reps. Okay. I'm very explosive, yeah. so I'm good at kind of low reps, real fast pace stuff yeah. over short distance, long distance stuff. I'm terrible. At that. Oh, right, so. And um, just love my body over the years. I know how good I respond to things. And I just, just this arm is just blocked up. No, no, no. But um, it's good, just, it's, it's different. Yeah, not four reps, man. I see. It's more than anything, the burn is, is where the vertical is. That's it, nice. Other, one last good catch. So, nice. That's it. Okay, so yeah, torch presses are badass, way harder than it looks. You have to find that anatomical lockout of wrist. Yeah. And that's, a, that's a hard thing. Um, but now let's try that uh, that double lateral torch. Okay, so we we would must look straight. And so the trick to this, and, and what I always think people kind of see wrong, is is they think of it as this huge turn, which is really fucking hard. Whereas what I actually do is I push him up, yeah. that's a piece of piss, yeah. and then I whip him, I whip him down. So I spend as little time as possible with the clubs horizontal, basically. So they're they're vertical there, they're vertical there. So I don't fuck around in the middle kind of thing. So let's just start with a set of five, man. Let's see what happens. Yeah, the first bit is get behind your back. Get up nice big stretch. The elbows high, just come down nice and low. So up, and then whip them down. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So overcooked it, man. So a little bit less energy. And you'll be able to find that vertical. And commit to them coming sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely out to the side, rather than that temptation to bring it forward. Yeah. So that's it, that's it. Nice man. Yeah, for the first couple we you kind of just instinctively want to take yeah. the chest, yeah. take them out to the side like that. It, it requires you to stay retracted through your shoulders. So what we say about like training the back of the shoulders, training the weak and pass retraction, but in this, this rotational kind of form where you are working on um, yeah, the, the weak parts of the shoulders, what's called. Uh, but we'll have one more set of that now. Let's see if we can have with these as well. Not that much heavier, just a little bit longer. So I think it was, it was one of the reasons when I, I got into the competition, so I started to clean them up because my grip strength was sick compared to everybody else's. Um, the grip strength's always been good. Yeah. Um, even on like, Europe, she's still a bit of Hercules Hole getting third on that. But, um, <laughs> different, different way of doing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a few more records in grip stuff. Yeah. Pinch yeah. grip and stuff like that I'm very good at. But, um, it's just different. <laughs> Thumb, man. It's, just, it's a bitch because, I mean, the ball is quite a technical thing, so it allows you to do all sorts of spins. But, obviously, it just makes that on an open yeah. kind of thing, so the whole time it's swinging at your hand. With you know essentially a, a ball is trying to open your hand as well. So uh, yeah, that's it. Just it now. But I've, I've never met somebody who was good at clubs straight away. Like it's just it's so unique. Yeah, um, it's very um, it's very different. But at the same time, I've never seen somebody have the benefits very quickly from them. Yeah, and that's the exciting thing. Is these awkward movements all of a sudden your shoulders just you're just free. Doing right? stuff that you're not used to. Isn't it? Yeah, so a different these are saving, so saving from all my knots and shit like that. You know, you're getting shoulders. I even now, I just I feel a little bit looser just yeah. putting my hands over here. That's a good one. Well, the right one, the left one, I can't move it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some high that I do with 50 reps without a rest, and always, like, I put them down and just start crying about my forearm. <laughs> nice, good stuff. Yes, yeah, good one. It's good for the hips, man, that's the hips. Nice. He's done. He's done.
up a lot. Like sat here now, there's nothing. Yeah, yeah. But going through when I load it, yeah, yeah. then I can feel pain. Okay. Uh, when you load it, you're pressing rather than. Yeah, I mean, squats, I can feel it, but push press, anything that's sharper, faster, more, that fast. Yeah. yeah. Quite superficial or quite deep? Um, probably more superficial, to be honest. Okay. Okay. Well, a little. Not, not. The thing is, I'm constantly used to being in pain. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, so, are you aware of me doing this? Is this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah just where in, in the. Okay. Just a mild discomfort. Just relax as much as possible. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, how did you do it? Push press. Push press. Okay. Was it instantly new? Yeah. Um, I've got a video of it if you want to see. Um, okay. It is now. Initially, it was um, I couldn't walk upstairs yeah. and get in and out of the car. But um, yeah, now day to day stuff. Are you clicking, catching, or locking? Or Not anything? really. No. If I stay in a seated position, like in a car, for too long, yeah. I can feel it a little bit. But, um, I kind of need to straighten out the leg. But, um, no, it's nothing too bad. Okay, that's good. Um, start off with just going to do a little bit of single leg work. Yep. <clears throat> Just go through your balance, so you can use the straps to improve your system when you do this. It just helps improve your balance and your coordination. Yeah. You put your knee, you can see in the video where you've stepped in, it's yeah. not down too far off this internal side, so it's caused that pressure on your cartilage basically. Um, so the idea behind rehabilitation from now on in is make yourself as strong as possible. Your mm -hmm. cartilages are renowned for being terrible healers and have a terrible blood supply. Yeah. Take the time. So, what you can actually use is the straps just to start you off on a single leg start, come nice and central. You just learn to sit down behind. Yeah. Once you get good at those, you can end up with that as well. You know, in terms of injuries, safety, and things like that, you start off yeah. in this position. Not exactly like right. <laughs> you come down that. Do you do much single leg squats? Or are you Not really. I have done some kind of Bulgarian split stand squats. Okay, okay. so always start from your legs, it's always your left leg first.
<laughs> yes, we equally important is your balance, and that's why we encourage people to do this kind of exercise. Um, you know, you think when you do most of sports, if you're on your own, things like that, you actually spend a significant amount of time on one foot. So having that stability in your ankle and in your foot is equally important. Um, so this exercise, perfect just for a warm up as well. You know, completely unloaded, no weight or anything like that. Just being able to practice that kind of movement. And once you get good at that, you can then move on to without the straps, okay? And you want to just try it, and this starts to improve your balance a little bit as well. And what you can do, just slowly, whatever you're comfortable, just don't go too far down, just stand up and sit down, just learn to control that single leg movement. That becomes really important. We're not trying to over fatigue it, so you can just go to three or four on each side and swap over. You're recording this. <laughs> <laughs> if you do actually do stand face off the camera when you see this back later, you'll be able to see what I can see. Good, so you've got a slight wobble in the hips as well. That probably tells us there's a slight lack of glute control. Yeah. So glute's really, really important. Uh, I tend to get really lazy in people. Um, I'm quite a quad dominant. You're quad dominant. Yeah. So, yeah. So you could like to switch off and they like to do nothing. Yeah. Um, so what you can use is you can use the urban strength bar for your glutes and your single leg stuff. Um, you can also begin to use. Have we got any of them? That's the channel for here. Yeah. It's got like single leg yeah. warriors, but it's got some, some best leg program I've ever had. Um, anything that. I, it's one of those things that I think the argument is always that you can't get enough load. I suppose, you know, you're, you've already got the force, so uh, it's a power, uh, yeah. power um, it's a secondary issue. Uh, one, one of the things that works really well on this is um, a staggered squat, uh, and it's kind of similar to a board game squat. So you've got to hold the very end of the bar, uh, and then pretty much stand next to it, hook your knee over it. And I do get to rest quite a lot of weight on, on the bar, on my shin, probably. and then my floating knee is just behind my standing knee. So by the time I get to the bottom, Essentially, my knee is going to be kind of in line with my heel. That's where it looks like more like a staggered squat rather than a, a traditional lunge. And you can think of this as almost like a deadlift. So I'm going to pull myself back up. So you've got the arm there to kind of assist the motion, trying to get that back knee down to the ground every time. My chest is really upright, so there's very little load on my, on my back. Like that. That's it. Come on. Yeah, love it. Then. Pop forward a little bit, Mark. Right? So I'm right to the front of the bar, basically. Yeah, sweet, 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 sweet. Let's give you a little bit more space to get that right knee right down. Keep channel, look up. Sweet. The nice thing about the open strength bar is it's a six foot live axle. So if you crop your balance up, it really punishes you. Yeah. So you start to become very accurate with your force. Uh, while I'm about it. Yeah, nice one. You see the range of movement you get in there versus the straps? Yeah. And so when we're trying to develop better glute control, we know glutes and hamstrings are going to be working at the bottom range of movement a lot more than the top. Um, so if we get away from these kind of the half range of movement kind of single legs, make a big difference to the See that range of movement with that balance, man. Yeah, so I uh, guess yeah, a style of movement that would benefit you a lot. Um, so if you get this one, this is not. So we mash up into more. So think of this almost like a TRX. So it's something that works, but we're loaded into it. So my feet are in front of the bar. And then palm up, palm down, fingers on the outside. And essentially, I'm going to do a squat, take it under my armpit. And now you see how I can kind of row myself back up. So this is definitely not just a lower body exercise. If you take your hands to your back, it feel a bit awkward. Just start, you know, uh, you know, your hand just behind your ass. And you just finish in this kind of deep squat. 
squat position where now you're going to pull yourself back up. And that's what I call a push pull. So there's loads of variations of push pull exercises with the under strength bar. Pushing with my right arm, pulling with my left arm, building yeah. rotation into your squat. And obviously encouraging you to get a nice deep range of movement as well. But once you're kind of happy with that, can we do the same jazz uh, on one leg basically? So what we'll do is we'll lift the, um, the outside leg okay, and come all the way down. I'm just kind of loading that, uh, that weight to the back of the bar. And now from here I'm going to pull my left, push with my right to pop back up. Pop forward a little bit, uh, Lawrence, on your right leg. Yeah, cool. Nice man, get ready to back up. So it's there, try to straighten your toe up as well. Do you want the, the foot? Yeah, just make sure the foot's pointing straight ahead. Deep squat there. Explode up. You can load it. Wait. 
Okay, no problem with the most heavy back, sound like heavy back. Drive up, control on that side, increase the strength, stability in this joint position. Okay. Yeah, easy? Too easy? Not or? too easy, no. Sure. Better than that. <laughs> so what you can actually do is start to progress it for a minute. Okay, you can go from side to side. But when you get into that landing position, come up, get down to the other side, push it down into that position. You can see it from the bottom, all the way up over to the top. That's a big press out to the side. Try the back of the room first.
Don't know what it means. Basically, kind of trying to open the hips up on anything. So if you chuck the tail out to your right, and then you do is literally drop your Achilles onto you, uh, that knot, basically. So you're in this kind of position. So that pop forward, so your right shoulder is under the anchor that is connected to yourself. And then literally all you're going to do is some, some nice open like leg swing pose. Do that, and kind of come right out to 90 degrees, point at the one in front of you. What I'm trying to do is keep my, so my shoulder always pointing forward, so it's really kind of like glute, trying to take that out to the side. I put it right across the dynamic, you start to stretch the, the abductor muscles. It's not really tense in here. Um, and then you hold that silk with your right hand, have a nice degrees. So blood sport, bend down. So you literally fall into the thing, hold it for four seconds. And then when you're there, you're going to pull your arm to come back out. Then we go for another four. So you literally slide in, stay nice and tall through the chest. And pull yourself back in with your arm. Good, two more. So you slide in, you give it a little bit of a punch with that top arm if you want. And then pull. And then last one. Punch. And pull. Cool. So now, if you hop forward, your foot should naturally go behind you. You point the toes down, so we're almost getting that balance lunge position again. Yeah. You tuck your ass under as hard as you can. So you tilt your pelvis. That should give you a decent stretch on the front of your right hip already. And just think, literally, you're going to go down, keeping that tilt, and then come up. So next time we go down, it hurts the knee a little bit as well. Okay. Oh, okay. The left or the right? The right. Okay. That's the back. You push it back on it, it hurts more or less. Yeah. 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 It's that deep flexion. Yeah. 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 It's, it sort of stretches the bridge, yeah. that's when it hurts. Any kind of pressure on it, it's going to It's going to 100 meters spread. So hands down by your, your kind of foot. You're going to hop your foot over the foot. Alright, cool, cool. And then literally straighten your right leg. So our, our aim here is to try and get my, my toes to touch the backboard. Yep. So if you can, try and get your hands in the air. And I'm going to use my shoulders to push myself back and use my left leg to push myself back as well. So nothing crazy, this just kind of sets us up to open the hips up, open the hamstrings up a little bit. You should feel like the front of your right hip ideally. Maybe the back of your hamstring on your left as well. All right, so now let's walk it forward. And so here, can you float left leg? Sweet, and if you're there, can you touch your uh, right elbow with your left knee? Nice. And then from there, can we take it over the top? And come back. And now, shoot that left leg as far forward as you can. And literally in between your hands. And then from there, turn the right leg out. And so we think uh, kind of jazz that we're going to literally turn it out 90 degrees. Bring that left leg forward a little bit further if you can. Yeah, you got it, man. Sweet. From there, you're just going to start to push yourself backwards. Yeah. I say it's a marker for us. And, uh, again, it's one of the ones where nobody makes it look easy the first time they do it. I always have a heart attack. Um, but uh, it gets better. Let's uh, see what it looks like on the other side. Yeah. 
know. I'm going to take some sit upward. Tuck the hip down. And we'll see how those, those hips work here. But remember, you've got to really tilt the pelvis under. And then do the drops. That's 100 bits of And then just straighten that left leg as much as you get. And then how much can you push yourself back before trying to keep that left leg straight? Nice and nice. Deep breath in and then try push that hip down. <laughs> yes. So you have the advantage of having your hand above you 
uh, is that when you drop down to like a traditional kind of lat stretch, you, you can essentially use your body weight, which I think will help you um, a lot. Yep. And so what I'm able to do now is, is kind of go past where obviously the, the floor would normally be. This yeah. can support your body weight. Once you get a decent stretch, what we're going to try and do is actually round the lower back. So I keep my chest pressing down. If you watch my pelvis, I tuck the hip. And it, it makes a, a massive difference to the stretch. You have to you set that up. Literally put your wrist in there. Like I said, don't worry about anything with your pelvis before you actually get stretch up. Thumb points up. Yep, you got it. Let's bring this in line a little bit. So, so for now, all we're trying to think about is pushing the chest down. So you got your left arm to support a bit of weight. You start to feel this in the lats? Yep. Yeah, sweet, man. So now, tuck the pelvis under, so you round the, the tailbone. And you feel how that kind of starts to connect this to this? Yeah. So obviously your lats connect to your lumbar spine. Very hard to get the, uh, yeah, the, the, the fascia around your lower back actually stretching with your lats. Because that feels the pelvis makes a big difference. And now you're just using your breathing, keeping that arm in. More big breaths. That's awesome, man. That's really nice. That felt like a nice stretch. Sorry? That felt like a good stretch. Yeah. That's good. That's well. Thumb points up. Two big breaths. To be honest, you mounted before yeah. or on non training days. Yeah, yeah. I spend more time on non training days doing it, but um, I don't do much after, to be honest. I think there's, there's definitely some value in specific cycles after training. Yeah. Um, so chest, um, you know, some of the last stuff that we're looking at here. Yeah. And, and you can see you're dropping like four inches, man. Do you know what I mean? So I don't feel like you're changing range of movement loss, but my hand is literally going like this. So um, there's a lot of value in it because it, it, it stops, like you say, that short term. Tightening. So if, you, if you miss a couple of your mobility days, you feel the difference. Yeah. If you add in like you know, a few stretches like this, I think after your, uh, your workouts, you'll see some much quicker progression of your mobility. Um, outside of that, in terms of ankle mobility, like you talked about foam rolling, do you foam roll your calves? Uh, yes, foam roll yeah. the calves. I used to do some like, stretches with bands for the yeah. um, kind of like distraction kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it might have bands like pulling. To, to release the kind of joint. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many different ways of, 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 of stretching your Achilles. But for me, the most important side of it is your knee is bent. Um, so, uh, so the one that I tend to do, and you know, this, we might have to find an um, adaptive version of this, um, you know, just because of being down in the low. You're, you're literally just resting in your shin. The knee, the knee is like really in front of the toes. And then what you basically do is you lean into your thigh. And what you're going to do is close this angle. So my shin is getting closer and closer and closer to my toes. Yeah. And the, the, the more mobility we have here, the less stress you have to put through your knee. You're trying to keep the heel down. It doesn't really matter. And, and you will find it's definitely going to come up a centimeter. Yeah. Like, you don't need to be over there. But it doesn't matter if it comes up a centimeter. Because um, more important than the heel staying down is me getting this angle, yeah. basically. And, and you see, I've just got this really good kind of line there. So let's have a see uh, what it looks like in that kind of position. We shut themselves about ballistic stretching, so just a little oh, gentle oh, bouncing. But it, it's not a bad way of using the stretch to make the muscle contract and then relax. Um, there's probably some stuff on the shin when the, uh, the bicep 
hybrid gyms as well. I'm a massive fan of uh, acceleration training and uh, it's misunderstood in terms of science and how you use it for release of research. Um, but again, very, very useful for sure. But again, for guys that have such powerful muscles, uh, you kind of need something that's going to fucking help uh, release yeah. them as well. I also find just having someone help me with stretching mm. is massively yeah. beneficial because I can't yeah. sort of get into certain positions. Yeah, man, you're a unit. Yeah, yeah. Totally. That's why I say sometimes I crouch, crouch yeah. positions yeah. actually yeah. don't really work. Yeah. 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 You know, like I said, I've done quite a lot of set up and he's meant to be shit that's from it, but there was some fucking crazy stretching yeah. I could do with him. Because, uh, again, it's, uh, you know, it's a bigger structure than that. Uh, with with taught how to stretch, so uh, that's a change of yeah. opinion. <laughs> That's a good stretch in there. I mean, I think, you know, last few chests we're aware of, we've got some good stretch in there. Um, your core's going to be the pitch because um, it's such a powerful muscle. You know, you have to beat the shit out of it, stretch the shit out of it. But it's, it's, it's quite hard to find stretching uh, for your quad without creating a decent amount of knee flexion. So hopefully over the next week or two that inflammation is going to go down. Yeah, um, I hope so. It's improved a lot anyway. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of treatment on it. Yeah. Um, like Andrew said, it's a hard area to get blood flow into. Yeah. So I've been doing quite a few. Well, I've got, I don't know if you know, um, but I see John Williams. He's really good. Mm -hmm. And he's been doing loads of different things. Laser treatment. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know the squid? Yeah. So we've got one of them on it, um, needling, obviously grasping stuff, just anything to get blood in the air. Yeah. And then on my own, I'm doing a lot of kind of, I've got a, um, a Theragun, I'm well, not a Theragun, a um, yeah, I think, I but um, icing it, hot treatment, just, just trying to get blood in there. Keep the, I'm trying to go through full range of motion in terms of lifting. So. Yeah. And now I, I can pretty much squat. <laughs> Pain free. In the bottom area, I, I wouldn't want to feel heavy weight in the yeah. bottom area. Yeah. Um, today, on the mats, being on my knees, not too bad. On a hard surface, yeah. Yeah, yeah. still very painful. And just a couple of the things we did today, yeah. I needed to be a bit careful with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, I, I think the reason the left quad's tight is just because I'm compensating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just been probably even walking and stuff like that. Because that felt tighter than the, <laughs> the right quad. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, that's probably normal. Yeah, but I think as, as soon as you're happy to, I, I would definitely want to start working with you some pretty heavy single leg work. Um, you know, so, so 100 kilo kind of ball game, split squats, things yeah. like that. Well, I need to squat because I've got a squat coming up. Yep. Well, other than that, I, I like to work with glutes and hammies because I feel they're weaker. Yeah. And then whatever you suggest. Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't really care about so no, you got it, man. I mean, the big compounds you're going to be working on are uh, the right things. You know, so, like I say, uh, as events as a group you can. And I guess where, where, where I'm looking at is the single leg work. Um, write down maybe what you think I should be doing. Yeah. If you, I, I told you what days you're training for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and they you're look great, man. I think some stuff. If you give me an indication that has two more volumes yeah. around your, your main list, so the event style list, yeah. so what's your volume to it? Cause, cause well, I'll, I'll send you what I did for the first six weeks. Yeah. Um, what it helps me understand is your recovery, because one of the things I want to do is maximise yep. your recovery from your big sessions. Um, and there's so much shit that we're going to be doing that will make you so much stronger that will aid your recovery. So they really complement each other. Um, so we know it looks non specific, which it is. It helps you recover for the specific shit. Um, and then there's a, we see if we can kind of strengthen some of the weaker links. Cool. Um, it's very, very good out.